This is Dr. Kathy Milhauser. In this lecture, I will be reviewing a method of examining organizations through a variety of metaphorical lenses based on Gareth Morgan's book, Images of Organization. We will be reviewing seven metaphors that can be used to understand the dynamics inside organizations. Keep in mind that these are not descriptive metaphors. In other words, these are not types of organizations. Rather, they are lenses that you can use to look at organizations. Some lenses are better suited for studying various organizations, but these labels do not define or confine an organization to the behaviors we will discuss. They simply help us see various things more clearly, just as a magnifying glass or other type of lens might. The machine metaphor emphasizes the orderly arrangement of who does what and who has authority over whom. It is a mechanical type of thinking concerned with a clear hierarchy, lines of authority, responsibility, discipline, and stability. Routine, efficiency, reliability, prediction, and control are the elements we see through this lens. When we look at organizations this way, we see human beings being expected to fit the requirements of the machine. What we don't see? The human element the informal networks, the creativity and innovation of the workers. A strength of this metaphor is that it works well where a machine would work well, such as a stable environment where people are trained to perform repeatable tasks. A weakness is that this metaphor can dehumanize the work and the workers. People become replaceable cogs. The machine metaphor implies limited adaptability and mindless bureaucracy. The organization as an organism is a biological image, with less preoccupation with orderliness than the machine, and more attention given to adaptability and flexibility. This is an image of a mimic octopus. This octopus can assume the shape of other objects and organisms in its environment. When we look at an organization through the organism metaphor, we see how tasks and lines of authority can be changed in response to the environment. This metaphor considers survival, relationships between the environment and the organization, effectiveness as opposed to efficiency. This metaphor causes us to consider a systems approach. An open system that is self-regulating includes requisite variety and will evolve and adapt as the environment changes. Strengths of this metaphor are the openness and flexibility that emphasize human capacities. It works in turbulent environments that require adaptation. There are also limits to this metaphor for organizations. It is easy to extol its virtues and overlook its built-in conflict potential. Organisms are not infinitely adaptable, but can become obsolete and die. We can also view an organization as a political system. A political system can be autocratic, democratic, and anywhere in between. The key construct is interests individual interests, departmental interests, management interests, employee interests. All interests bring potential for conflict to the extent that interests can compete for position, space, and resources. Conflicts arise whenever interests collide. These can be personal, interpersonal, or between rival groups or coalitions. Power is the medium through which conflicts of interests are ultimately resolved. Power influences who gets what, when, and how. This metaphor also has strengths and weaknesses when used to view organizations. A strength is that it brings attention to the reality of organizational politics by asking the question, whose interests are being served? A weakness is that it tends to highlight conflict more than collaboration. A cultural perspective can also be used to view organizations, not just an overall corporate culture, but the subcultures of its groups and the societal culture of which its own cultures are a part. People who share a culture interpret situations and events in similar ways, sustaining their common outlook with figures of speech, symbols, and ceremonies. In his book, Morgan states that shared meanings provide alternatives to control through external procedures and rules. From this view, we see the wide organizational life that is beyond the overtly rational. The strengths of this cultural metaphor include that it brings attention to the unconscious and accepted values and norms in the organization. However, this metaphor can degrade into a perspective that turns humans into rather mindless collectives 
downplaying individuality. Culture is self-organizing and is always evolving, which can be missed if we look at a single snapshot in time. The family metaphor is not articulated separately by Morgan, but is a specific type of cultural lens that can be useful when examining certain organizations. When we look at an organization as a family, we begin to see elements such as roles, relationships, caring and nurturing behaviors, learning, growth and development, and support systems that help the members of the organization rely on one another. This metaphor can also uncover issues of power that are related to relationships and to the multi-generational nature of family culture. The strengths and weaknesses of this metaphor are similar to the culture metaphor, with the added element of emotion that can color our perception when using this metaphor. The brain metaphor presumes that intelligence is spread throughout the organization, similar to a holograph in which any part can reproduce the whole. The organization can learn to learn better, which is referred to as double loop learning. The brain metaphor reminds us that organizations that are continuously learning are able to detect deviations from standards and are able to initiate corrective action. Morgan asserts that every aspect of organizational functioning depends on information processing of one form or another. The brain metaphor allows for creativity and ingenuity of the human component to be emphasized. However, the reality in many organizations is that human creativity is constrained, so this metaphor can fool us into believing that an organization is learning and thriving when it may simply be adjusting performance in a way that the machine metaphor would also emphasize. The final metaphor we will review is called the psychic prison. This metaphor illustrates Irving Janus's dynamic referred to as groupthink. In this case, the organization gives purpose and structure to the lives of its members. The roles that individuals play become their realities. Morgan warns that powerful visions of the future can lead to blind spots. Ways of seeing become ways of not seeing. A strength of this metaphor is that it can expose how people become trapped in a group mentality and that it raises discussion regarding whether it is possible for people to break out of such a restraint. A weakness of this metaphor is that, in reality, identities tend to develop from the complex interplay of relationships, roles, and responsibilities one experiences. It is unlikely in modern organizations that an individual would suppress his or her own ideas and identity to the extent that is implied by this metaphor. I hope that you have found value in this lecture on Gareth Morgan's Images of Organization. Please review the full text and other sources for more information on how to view an organization through these lenses. A strength of this metaphor is that it works well where a machine would work well, such as a stable environment where people are trained to perform repeatable tasks. A weakness is that this metaphor can dehumanize the work and the workers. People become replaceable cogs. The machine metaphor implies limited adaptability and mindless bureaucracy.